All right, now we're back. You may be wondering why I have this um, plastic spoon. Um, I just want to use it to get underneath these rubber uh, things. I don't really know if it's going to work, but I just generally don't like the idea of scratching the lens. So, okay, what we're going to do now first, we're going to tackle the 400 first. Um, and basically, what we got to do is we've got to get underneath this rubber to get at these um, little set screws. So take it easy on this stuff. It is pretty old. What you might want to do, I'm not doing right now, but I maybe could, is it's, as you're noticing, it's kind of hard. But um, I used it when I first did this. I used a hair dryer, warmed this up nicely, and it. Uh, it did a pretty good job of softening this up. But basically, when you spin this around, you're gonna see that there's about, I think there's two or three of these axis holes on the, on, through this spinning thing. Um, there's six holes on the other side, three of them have a set screw. What you need to do is unscrew that set screw. You can unscrew it partially, uh, or to be safe, unscrew it fully, take it out and don't lose it. Um, I've taken them out already, so, those set screws that are in those three holes are already out. So then basically next what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew this lens. So I have now, as you can see, it's I'm now unscrewing this connection. A lot of turns there. You want to take your time and be careful. It is a really nice piece of gear. And look at that gorgeous element there. That that chunk right there, that's a big heavy dinner plate of glass right there. That's one of the largest fluorite crystals ever grown. Apparently it took years to grow that. So don't break it. Um, what you see here as this moves forward here, I'm not sure if I'm focused right, but um, that's the element we need to move forward. Now, this one's already been moved forward, um, but as you spin it, you can see that moves forward and backwards, and when you're at infinity, it's as far forward as it can be. Now, you'll also notice that the, uh, that this, that, well, I should have had it here, but normally there's a brass plate. The, plate is upstairs is pretty pretty straightforward to figure out there's two two Phillips screws here little Phillips screws take them out put a little brass plate out put them back in okay as you can see before it stopped here and now it stops a little bit further so it'll, it'll just go a little bit further than that's all you really need uh, the harder part the hardest part of this whole operation is moving that uh, forward so uh, oh, yeah you know what I really should take it's a good idea to take this rubber thing off. So you know what, I better do that then. So I can kind of illustrate what I am doing here. Again, using that, uh, using that hair dryer is a really good idea. Didn't really plan it that well for this DIY video. Could always hit stop and, and go get it, but Not too bad. Okay, so I've taken the rubber thingy off. Uh, see the residue from the contact cement like stuff to keep it from rotating? I didn't have to put any back on. It went back on, and this thing, especially when heated up, you know, and it pops back on, it shrinks. It doesn't slide. Like it'll slide the first day, but after a couple of days, it, it's, it tightens up nicely, and it's, you know, you can throw some contact cement on there if you want to. But, uh, anyways, as you you basically have to spin this thing around until okay, until you see it's been a week since I've done this so bear with me you need to find okay you probably will have trouble seeing this but there's like a screw there 
uh, and on the other side there's another screw right there. The, those are the screws that control the positioning of this element. Now, you could take this thing off by removing these four uh, uh, screws that are with a with an you know Allen key or J key, but mine were kind of stripped, so I had real trouble. I I didn't really want to drill them out or anything. So actually, to get to that flathead screw, uh, I simply used just one of the screw end things, a little little flathead screw, stuck it in, and used a uh, used some uh, needle nose pliers. That's all I really needed. So you didn't you don't actually have to even remove the whole thing. You need to take it out. Uh, unscrew it about you know three or four turns you don't want to have to come all the way out I took it all the way out it was really hard to get back in and line everything up so really in the end what I had to do was just unscrew it a bit from both sides okay um, now on this 400 those two probably can't see too well but I'm not focused that well but there, there's these two kind of uh, acting like um, nuts but it's just little plates that are that are uh, threaded um, you just need to uh, break they're glued in to, to the center position so when you unscrew those things partially the screws will come out partially then you need to actually push those screws back in with like some sort of needle nose pliers just kind of push them in and break that mild glue it's like a Loctite glue it's not that strong then what you need to do is you'll need to work upside down and you'll just sort of shake it until that whole element, that whole focusing moving element slips down and then you'll need to just retighten those retighten those screws. Now when you start tightening them without putting new glue down, which I wouldn't recommend doing, uh, those those uh, plates will shift, will kind of get cocked a bit sideways. So what I found I had to do is not only when, I, when it was all the way down, I would put my finger in, counter the rotation of the plate and then t and then get the thing tightened down. Anyways, I managed the whole thing without knowing what I was doing. Took me less than two hours. Uh, if I had to do it again right now, you know, I could probably do it in half an hour. So, once you re, you know, loosen, break the glue, shift that thing upwards by basically letting gravity be your friend, and then retightening it, you've now moved that focusing element as far forward within the without any modification to it. If for some reason you decided to go back to shooting just FD. You can loosen it, reposition it back so that those two plates realign with the end of that, uh, with the end of this kind of uh, ridge, which is about, which is very close to where it was originally, um, and and you'll be back to 100% original. So I wouldn't want you doing anything to these beautiful lenses that would reduce their value. I don't like those permanent modifications or anything because these these are you know especially now that. Uh, I would expect these mirrorless cameras are getting better and better at some point. You may not want to use them on Canon DSLRs and you'll be fine with using them with hopefully at some point a good Canon, hopefully full frame sensor, you know, evil mirrorless body, but you know, we may have to wait a few years from that, who knows. For now, DSLRs, if once we get this working on uh, on the new uh, DSLRs, that's, I have to say, I've been using this for a week and I'm really enjoying this lens. So basically I'm, we're done. Once we do those two things, once we take that out, shift that forward you're ready to put everything back together and that's it what exactly what I did um, you just kinda pop everything back into place and just screw it all together and tighten all the put, put all the original screws back in and it wasn't that many and you'll be uh, good to go you wanna make sure you line the thing up properly you don't wanna uh, thread this wrong or anything. I don't remember it being this hard. There we go. And you're almost done and then once we just kind of get this on there you got again you use the hairdryer thing make the rubber soft flip it up retighten those four set screws and you're basically done that's it it's been converted you attached your Edmica adapter which just kind of it engages the aperture lever pops in twists and now this lens for all intents and purposes is acting like an EF lens now Really, the uh, 
the 300 is virtually identical. Uh, there is, with the 300, there is no glue holding the, those little set screw things. So you basically just need to do the same thing and it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit different mechanism like the, the, um, the nuts that hold it instead are, uh, are more like, I don't know, you'll see when you get there. But it's really nothing daunting. Get the focus thing shifted forward, tighten the thing back up, take the uh, stop portion out and you're good to go with both. Both of them easily focus beyond infinity and what's nice is these mechanical um, focus stops um, what, you, what I would suggest you do is focus exactly on infinity and then use this focus stop and position it so that way when you're just walking around and something's almost on the horizon or some kind of a landscape photo with, with something really far away just spin the thing till it stops and take the picture and you'll know it'll be in focus so that's about all it there is so that's how you do it. If there's any questions, feel free to email me at edmikapix uh, at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, I, I think this same conversion, the same approach on these two lenses will work with the only two lenses that are white from FD that I haven't tried yet, which is the FD 200 F2 and the FD 500 F4.5 but they, they have the same kind of focusing barrel mechanism, same, same concept you know, I would think in an hour without knowing what you're doing, just following these basic concept steps, you'll have those things working um, on, uh, on EF bodies. So, um, yeah, so check me out on Flickr. I'm user Ontarian. Uh, check out canonrumors.com. There's an article there on converting your lenses that kind of goes in the history of this thing. And uh, again, my email is 